break. I'm sure you would agree, Marco Slow. Absolutely, Mike. They were camping outside the gate at 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. There are really so many people here. The V8s are alive and strong. John Bow on pole. Seventh pole and eight starts, 107.32, and sharing the front row, a boy to keep an eye on today, Mark Scaife in the Whitfield Racing Commodore. He's won here twice in the last two years. Row number two, Neil Crompton, the Coca-Cola Commodore, and Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Falcon. Out of row three, Larry Perkins in the Castrol Commodore, with Dickie Johnson in car 17 alongside him. Row four, Wayne Gardner, Crompton's teammate back there, and 05, Peter Brock, the Mobile Commodore. Row number five is Alan Jones in the second of the P. Jackson Falcons and Tony Longhurst in the Castrol Falcon EF. Row six, 015 Thomas Mazera, the Mobile Commodore and Jimmy Richards in the second of the Winfield Commodores. First of the privateers, Paul Romano on row seven with Mark Larkham in the Mitre 10 Falcon alongside him. Row eight, David Attard in the Alcare Air Conditioning Commodore and Bobby Pearson in the Product VP. Row number nine is David Parsons, young privateer in the Commodore and Mark Poole in the Cartronics Commodore. Row number 10, Chris Smurden in the Mitsubishi Electrics Commodore and John Trimble in the Daily Planet Falcon EV, leaving Kevin Waldock in the Team Komatsu Falcon out of row number 11. Holden versus Ford, the square up. Race one for round number eight. John Bow in 18 and the man who's won here the past two years, Mark Scaife in the Winfield Commodore. Set to go at Malala before a capacity crowd and Bow wins the start at Crompton. Up the inside of Scaife goes straight by, so too does Larry Perkins. And an appalling start there from Glenn Seaton who's got shuffled back about six cars as they go down into the left-hander. Yeah, well, Scaife lost the start as well. A fabulous start by John Bow. He just seems to know exactly what to do. And a brilliant start by the Coke car. Old Neil is on the job today. John got the hammer down there. That thing just launched off the line and cropped an equally brilliant start from the second position to push his way through. He's got Larry Perkins behind him. And there's one spinning there. I think it might have been Thomas Mazira, was it? And, uh, and Parsons in trouble as well. As the field gathers themselves up, Crompton hanging on to second position. There's Parsons, the rookie in car 55. I think it might have been Mark Poole that had a problem as well back in the pack. He goes through. So they've all regained as they come down under brakes into uh, the right-hander. There's your race leader, John Bow, Neil Crompton. Then it's Larry Perkins, Jimmy Richards, a good start. Dick Johnson is the next one, then followed by Glenn Seaton and Alan Jones back in the pack a little deeper. You get the impression that may have been Peter Brock at the back of the pack there. It was a mobile car, Mark, for sure. Just not sure whether it was Brocky or Mazira. They come in to reel off one. Bow, the order over Crompton. Perkins is the next, followed by Richards. Then it's Johnson, Glenn Seat, Wayne Gardner. A gap back to Longhurst. Then Jimmy Richards. Peter Brock in all sorts of trouble at the back of the field. It was Brock who spun sideways there. He's back in last position. And for the man trying to track down John Bow's 32-point buffer in this championship, that is a cr critical blow. Yes, he can kiss today's uh, activities for Bow. He'll be mad about that, but he'll sort you on. Some great pictures there at the Castro race camp. As we ride out the front of Larry Perkins' car, he closes under brakes on Neil Crompton and the Coca-Cola Commodore, the right-hander. Now it's a straight run before the, uh, the right-hand curve as John Bow and the 18 Shell FAI Falcon starts to open it up by another couple of car lengths and Crompton finds that Larry Perkins and Mark Scaife are right behind him to keep him company. Well, there may be some people at home wondering where the Coke Commodores have come from all of a sudden. And then uh, Scaife sneaks through on the inside of Perkins under brakes there, so he's making a move through the field too. Moves up into third position ahead of Larry and Perkins. Not going to let him go. Sneaks up on the inside as they come through the sweeper. Down toward the braking area once again, but Scaife on a charge. Larry Perkins, we're with him with Castrol Oil's race cam up behind the Winfield Commodore VR as now Scaife tries to zero in on Crompton. Yeah, well, Mark would have been mad at himself about uh, a, that poor start, but he's obviously knuckled down and said, I know what to do for the rest of the race, and up to third already. A good recovery, but uh, a pity to lose uh, the opportunity you have when you're on the front row. So Perkins shuffled back to fourth. Should be a great battle. This bow's gone for a gamble on a much harder tyre than the Perkley tyre that uh, Perkins and Crompton are running. So as this race unfolds, you may see that coming into the equation. But Crompton at the moment, very quick times as he hangs onto the back of Bow, but Bow really is spreading away. He opened it up 1.6 seconds that last time across the start finish line. And the further that he gets in the lead, Mark, the easier he can be on the car. It might only be a little bit here and a little bit there, but uh, soft tyre or not, he can control his car if he's got the pack behind him. It's when you're in the middle of the field having to throw your car around to try and get back in the lead that chews up the tyres so badly. That Winfield car, the left front off the ground through that sweeper, really likes a soft car on a circuit like this. Mark has been testing it. Ooh, testing the back bumper bar. <laughs> sure 
is. <laughs> well, he'll keep the pressure on. Look at it, just pick up the inside front. He'll try and get down the inside again here for the next corner. Can't do it. It's a little too tight. But he is the man on the move at the moment, Mark Scaife, after losing the uh, the initial kick at the start. He's now up on the tail of Neil Crompton's co-commodore. Larry Perkins was sitting in company with them, but he's dropped back into the clutches of Dick Johnson at this stage. And there is a little run off the racetrack from Neil Crompton. He had problems with brakes yesterday. Tries to get back out again now as they head down to the right-hander. Yeah, so whether he just got a little too far off. Slip up there on Neil's part. He got, got wide, and I don't think it was marked. If he didn't force him off the track. Great recovery too, but he's got Perkins right up behind him as they come through the sweeper once again. And Scaife, is that... No, Sc Johnson up there, yes. he's has so been in, in uh, contact with another car. Look at well, the damage on the front of the Winfield Commodore. Well, I think you'll find that may have been a hit up the tail of Neil Crompton coming out of that corner. Gee, it must have been one heck of a hit. Well, something upset Neil. He didn't just drive off the, off the circuit. That's no. not his style. Let's, let's have a look at this on race cam as a replay, thanks to Tui's. Oh, this will be good. That's that the back of Crompton's car. Oh. Bang! Cop that, oh, young man. Billy. Oh, the hood's up. Good. Oh, well, Bang. we know why Crompton got nerfed off the off onto the dirt. Hang he on, was lucky to run out. Now he's uh, gone off where he went yesterday in practice, so he, know, he knew what to do. Everybody jumping on the brakes at the end of the main straight and really using their cars up. Uh, Wayne Gardner bringing up the... Uh, Coke team into contention again after Neil had his oops. First time the Falcons have run to with the inner guard shotgun panels as they're called in the front of the car. Slightly higher front right hot on the car was expected to pull them back a bit. Talk to most of the four teams that's had the effect of probably one, maybe two, three tenths of a second on the fast track. So the Falcons still very, very quick. The Commodores have got to fight for every inch of space. Look at Seaton down the inside of Larry. Thank you very much. And, uh, is it Gardner? Wayne, yeah, Wayne Gardner. He's going to have a go as well. He's capitalised, not quite. He needed a bit more room to get here into this left-hand sweeper. But he's serving notice on Larry that he's uh, got intentions of uh, more than uh, following him. There he goes long up the outside. I don't think he can do too much with that move. But he's certainly letting Larry know, uh, I'm about to pass you, mate. Well, we've already seen what happened in our replay. A big hit up the back of Neil Crompton from Mark Scaife. Uh, and uh, then you went off. Just uh, tell us what exactly what happened, Neil. Well, it was all a bit weird, actually, Mike. Um, right in this very spot here, I obviously misshifted. I didn't actually gate properly from third to fourth. I don't know we've got a problem with the gearbox, but I suspect driver error, to be honest. And uh, poor old Mark paid a pretty high price because he ran into the back of which I feel bad about. But uh, then we got down the other end of the joint, down to the other hairpin, and... Um, I'm not sure what drug stick was on, but he just went straight to the back of me and pushed me off. Oh. Well, we missed that part. Well, you've done well to recover, Neil. You've still got a good heat, plenty of laps in front of you, and another heat uh, later in the day, you can you can still get some good points. Yeah, that's right, Alan. The car's obviously very good, and uh, it'll be nice to try and get a good result for the Coca-Cola racing team. But we're pretty happy with the performance of the old beast at the moment. No, and, so. Um, okay, with a little bit of luck, I'll sort of be able to get some points back here. Well, stay with it. Oh, look how close it is here. A little bit of a tap. I don't know. Perkins got a little bit out of shape there. And Richards capitalises on that slow exit from the corner. He's side by side with Gardner as he's, they come through the sweeper. He's in the right spot now. Oh, careful. Pop of dust there. He doesn't give him a lot of room. Richards goes deeper under brakes and sneaks through on the inside of Wayne Gardner. 